Welcome back everyone for computer vision lecture series. This is lecture 2, part 2. In this lecture, we are going to talk about colors, what they are, how human vision is susceptible to colors, and uh, how other animals perceive it, as well as what it means to capture color. Okay, so let's begin. So, what is color really? Like when you see this image, you see red, blue, green and their intersection. But if I want to just see the red or the green or the blue, can I do it? Yes. Traditionally, images have been saved uh, on machines in digital format using three color, color ch channels. And when you independently see each color channel, you will see that they are just intensity values for that particular channel and in combination they give a perception of color for us. This is a traditional notation on how we represent the colored images in MATLAB. Let's say we have uh, an image of n cross m dimension, an RGB image. In this uh, the first location is the top left pixel value in the R channel. This is a notation where Y pixels down, X pixels to the right, basically, and the Bth channel. This value will give you the location. Uh, this this um, notation will give you the value five Y pixels down, X pixels to the right, and on uh, for the Bth channel. Similarly. This notation will give you the bottom right pixel in the B channel. B channel is the blue channel in this case. And if you read an image file, it returns uh, an unsigned integer uh, value between 0 to 255. If you want to convert it, you can convert it using this um, IM2 double format. This is basic MATLAB, MATLAB stuff. If you have, if you have uh, background in MATLAB, you know what this, this um, values mean. Okay. Similarly, uh, when you look at the, when you want to look at in a matrix form, you will see that the, these are the rows along the height. These are the columns along the um, uh, vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal direction. And each channel R, G, and B are stored in this sequence in MATLAB. However, in OpenCV, the notation is reversed for blue and red channels. Everything else remains the same. This is important for you because in the exercises we are using Python and we are using OpenCV library and you're going to know and if you have done already the zeroth exercise you already know that this is the standard notation followed by OpenCV library. Keep in mind the change in order because this has been one of the main uh, <laughs> problems occurring or issues by for, for a lot of programmers when they are using different image libraries and when you start using a different image library the first thing you have to uh, find out what is the sequence of color channels that the library stores it so what is color really i mean when you think of it it's all we can see right but do we all all we see are is it same for everyone or not we want to find it out so for that we want to see how our human eye works let's check out the anatomy of our eye here in this image you see that there is an iris uh, which is which is like a, a ra radial muscle which which is which contracts and uh, expands and controls the light that enters through pupil the pupil is this hole that has been formed naturally by contraction and expansion of the iris. And together they control the light intensity entering the eye. Pupils usually will expand in darkness and contract in bright light. Um, but what are the sensors? Where, do the, where does the light go and how do we perceive light? So the, after the light enters, it is projected on this uh, plane, the back of the eye which is called the retina. And in this retina, there are photoreceptor cells lined along this whole um, cur uh, curvature. They are called rods and cone. 
cones there are so we there, we have two types of light sensitive receptors in our at, at the back of our eye in the retina cones are one of them and rods are another together they form around 125 million uh, in numbers cones are lesser in number they are uh, uh, as the name say uh, as their name they are cone in shape they are fewer in number they are less sensitive to light and they operate in high intensity of light so during daylight cones are active or during the instances when there is high intensity of light the color vision is um, easy whereas in case of rods they are highly sensitive uh, during nights so because they are uh, large in number it's obvious to see why uh, our human eye is more in sensitive to light in general light intensity rather than colors um, this image or this uh, this diagram shows how the intensity of the light reflected by the objects changes from minimum uh, from a lower value to higher value and how these intensities are perceived by the cones and the rods so when there is uh, so this is the threshold for the dark um, sorry this is the threshold for the dark um, um, for darkness and this is the th threshold for the uh, very dazzling bright sunlight okay for uh, for very dark situations the intensity or the um, intensity of the light entering the the eye is uh, captured by the majoritarily the rods because at that time cones are not uh, active similarly as the intensity of the light entering the eye increases um, the reflection or, or or the cone vision comes into play and we see during sunlight or when we are outdoors and we are playing or doing sports or something like that at that time we uh, uh, we, we perceive colors more easily and more in a, um, dynamic form whereas when there is darkness it's not easy this is a very good diagram to show how the range of light varies from darkness to light and it's a very good motivation for high dynamic ranging imaging so uh, hdr imaging is one of the areas of computer vision where uh, uh, where you work with high intensity or um, very multiple channel uh, images with which has multiple spectral bands and you analyze them and do some interesting uh, feature extraction from them this is a motivation for uh, high, dynamic, high dynamic ranging um, uh, research areas um, probably this is also the reason why this the the way the rods and cons uh, behave this is one of the reasons why we are not able to see clearly the colors during night So obvious question comes to our mind what kind of wavelengths or what kind of range of uh, light is our human eye sensitive to right so this image diagram shows this is the range of all uh, wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum and in this there is a small region which is called visible light which ranges approximately from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers in wavelength and this is the range where human visual system is more sensitive to and we are able to uh, visualize all these colors present in this range um, so and, and in this range predominantly there are three colors red green and blue or a shade of blue and in combination of the uh, com combination of these colors produces a very high dynamic range for our perception of colors So how do the, these, uh, the color in the real world work for us as humans? How do these colors fare in terms of their spectral power for our human vision? This, this um, graph shows you how uh, the spectral power is distributed across the wavelengths. So, uh, and this on the y-axis, it shows the relative, absorb, uh, relative absorbance rate. So what happens is when your eye is illuminated by a white light, uh, blue is uh, absorbed with this intensity or this range of uh, values uh, is activated when um, you have blue color and similarly for green there is a small range and so is for uh, red 
and there are th and therefore uh, we as uh, we have three different kind of cones in our uh, retina or in the photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to these three major colors and these three major colors are do, do not have single wavelength there is a range of wavelength for which uh, the each of these three type of cones are sensitive to and depending on their power or their intensity uh, that a human eye receives for a, from a particular object we perceive one object to be of one color or the other um so let's study a little bit about the physical properties of the light uh, specifically the visible light uh, what do our, what, what are their physical characteristics and how they affect our perception of uh, light a multi spectral camera which is capable of recording uh, wavelengths from in visible light records the reflectance or the photons entering per millisecond into its sensor array in 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 a in a form something similar to this any patch of light that can be uh, can be described um, in this uh, through via this uh, distribution of colors inside the light so um there are different light sources right and we want to know how these light sources uh, play with the colors for example um laser laser has a very narrow wavelength uh it is highly monochromatic and it has a very uh, coherent beam and therefore it travels faster because it has only one wavelength of light we call it one wavelength but it's actually a group of wavelengths but for laser um it is very narrow the reason it's called a ruby laser is because the color that it emits is towards the color ruby similarly when you see gallium phosphide crystal it has a pretty um decent uh, spectral profile uh, the uh, the intent uh, the range of colors is from around 550 to around 650 and this is the profile of a gallium uh, phosphide crystal when it is uh, when it it is um, generating the light similarly a tungsten light bulb has this uh, profile for the light uh, spectrum and um uh, it's quite spread uh, but it's more towards uh, more more uh, more dense towards a uh, red or orangish uh, uh, of wavelength and when we look at normal daylight um this is a generic profile of a normal daylight because uh, there is no standard definition of uh, normal daylight right normal daylight could be anywhere in, on the planet i mean uh, when you go to the northern countries during winters the normal daylight is very dark there whereas if you go to desert regions the normal daylight has high intensity values with higher range of uh, colors so there is no standard definition to it but we assume that normal daylight is you know some um pleasant su uh, summer afternoon in a, a not too high temperature not too low temperature and therefore uh, this can be considered as a profile of a normal daylight it's basically sunlight but on a summer day kind of more examples specifically when we see the reflectance profile or reflectance spectra of the different surfaces we realize this is what gives the color to these objects so if uh, visible light is illuminated on uh, tomato the reflectance spectra uh, emitted by tomato is captured in this uh, profile and we see that it's majoritarily or heavily uh, towards red uh, end of the spectrum and therefore we perceive the color of tomatoes as red similarly for uh, bananas it is yellow and um, for uh, uh, for for uh, for for uh, blueberries as well as grapes it's a it's a different case here we see that the profiles are quite similar however uh, their colors we perceive are uh, a bit different so what's happening here we'll see that in a bit but the reflectance pro pro properties of different object uh, seems to be like a motivation to do more research in detection and analysis of this kind of properties because you know um this gives rise to a lot of question um different objects have this different properties of reflectance and uh, using those spectral uh, analysis we can recognize and detect different kind of objects present uh, in different places it can be applied to space exploration in astronomy in satellite imaging 
So hyperspectral imaging is one of the areas where which takes um, into account the physics of light and uh, calculates the reflectance spectra and recognizes and does a lot of analysis uh, and do identify different materials based on, based on the reflectance profiles. So a lot of um, a lot of uh, astro uh, astro astrophysicists rely on this kind of spectra to find out different stars and different materials that might be there uh, predominantly in those stars by studying the reflectance profile of these uh, stars. Okay, let's let's talk about a bit about the reflectance profile of the blueberries as well as the grapes. This there is a specific terms which is called metamers. So these are metamers. Um, what are metamers basically? So human cones absorb the total energy of all the colors visible in the visible spectrum. Okay, so uh, when the light is incident on our eyes, it does not differentiate between red and blue immediately outside the eye. The cones absorb in general everything and so they absorb uh, a combination of all this uh, intensity intensities together. So what happens is, let's say left side is the uh, spectral profile of the blueberries and on the right hand side is a spectral profile of um, grapes. But when they are um, uh, superimposed on the human visual system, their, their uh, absorption power is similar and therefore they look similar, in, uh, their perceived color is similar even though they have different power spectra. So this brings to the question, uh, do colors really exist? Because even if you have two different spectral profile and if, your, if their absorption property is same for human eye, we perceive them to be the same, uh, of the same color. So the natural question comes to our mind, does color really exist? And, they, uh, and these two are very really good um, uh, links where you can go and check out what does a mathematician say and what does a cognitive scientist say about it. So you will know that colors are really a um, um, uh, manifestation of the reflectance properties and they are not inherent to the objects. They are something that is perceived by human visual system but not inherent property of the, uh, of the object. But it is uh, uh, an inherent property of the object by the virtue of what it is made of. It reflects certain colors and absorbs certain colors and this gives the perception of particular color for a particular object. Um, there is an, a, another interesting thing called uh, tetrachromatism. Tetrachromatism means that uh, some animals or some living organisms are able to perceive more than three colors and their spectral profile density looks something like this. This profile is an ultraviolet profile. So there are some birds and some animals who are able to uh, visualize ultraviolet rays also, which is interesting. Um, And, and so they are able to see in, um, in uh, ultraviolet rays coming from the sun or outside space also or if it is emitted by certain objects or reflected by certain objects, the, these animals are able to absorb those waves and actually perceive them. And the most interesting part is that some humans also seem to have uh, tetrachromatism. It is estimated that around 12% of females have this. However, the problem, come, uh, the problem is that uh, true tetrachromatism is rare and it requires learning. And why is this so? Because the teachers who teach you about colors, they tell you that there are three colors, like I, like I did a while back. I said that there are three major colors in a human retina. And therefore, when you are a tetrachromatic person, you are not really uh, uh, recognizing the fourth uh, band of colors because uh, when you learn the association between the words and the actual colors, you miss out on this fourth one because the teachers, they don't teach you about the, the fourth band of colors. And this is very interesting. Assuming that colorblind mind, uh, colorblind men pass their, this fourth cone cell onto their daughters, uh, around 12% of the female population should, ha uh, should be uh, tetrachromats. But all of uh, this is only um, analysis because there is no strong evidence on or there is no strong way of learning this fourth uh, perception of this fourth color 
and therefore it's a it's a bit of a um a sad thing okay uh, we uh, before we end this uh, discussion on colors we see how bee bees see different colors in flowers and it's very interesting right when you look at these different colors or different um, spectral bands it is clear why the bees would be attracted to the center of the flower for the nectar so our vision like animals vision are evolved so that we can survive in our natural world for bees it is very important that they go uh, to the center of the flower and absorb the nectar to survive and this the vision of the bee is evolved according to according to this it is very interesting okay thank you very much uh, in the last part after this we will discuss a bit more about different color uh, spaces that are being used for storing images in digital format okay